what's up fellow lords of gaming and welcome back to another episode of marvel future fight so today what we've got is the patch notes and update details for um for marvel future fights uh, i think this is v720 ah who the fuck cares what what number it is it's the hawkeye update right so um maintenance it's going to be happening very soon tonight um and it's looking like it's going to carry well into the morning hours so uh, especially if you're on the east coast so you're not going to probably have a lot of time to play in the morning so you might want to jump in now this maintenance is also going to coincide with the maintenance that's currently happening over on uh, marvel future revolution as well so uh you definitely want to get your play time in on marvel future revolution today completed uh because you will have no time uh once the maintenance happens to complete any of your events tonight um, that looks like it's going to affect all net marble services across the board. I've seen things for seven deadly sins, seven nights and everything. They're basically pulling everything down. So make sure you get in there at that maintenance. As usual, they're going to give us our maintenance completion reward of the 150 energy, six hero chest and 100 boost points from the uh, maintenance notices side here. Now, what we have is very interesting because we've got... Um, Hey Bishop Hawkeye, <laughs> we got uh, we've got Hawkeye, and then we also have um, Echo receiving an update. Now the Echo update, I still have really weird feelings about, especially because uh, it it's weird to look at a character who is at the zenith of her power, and comics kind of get reverted because she's going to have. Now that's not necessarily saying that she's going to be reverted, but I love this uniform um but let's let's take a look at what's basically coming up so basically we're gonna have a couple of characters let's pull this up real quick and get these characters in a nice team formation to kind of help out here and make this a little bit easier so we've got the funny thing is we're basically gonna have two speed type characters and um and hawkeye and kate bishop and one of those characters is gonna become a um one of those characters echo is going to come from a blast type character to a speed type character so that should be interesting in of itself now really cool though is that i think a lot of people are going to like the fact that um echo is going to basically be a leadership support style character and so i think you're going to want to have her at the front she still maintains a hero identity despite uh, you know, being a villain in the series. I guess you can say she's somewhat of an anti-hero by, by end. So let's take a look starting up with uh, Hawkeye first. I think he's just going to be easiest to take a look at. He's basically, the last uniform that we had was his Avengers Endgame uh, uniform here, which was Ronin. Um, and that's probably his best uniform overall that he had in the game. Um, it was a good uniform, in my opinion. I like the look of it. Let's take a look at this. So his uniform effect, he was previously had a critical damage increase by 15% on this uniform. Um, now he's going to get increased chain hit by 20% and he's getting guard break immunity, which has an activation rate when the skill, uh, regular attacks, uh, excluded is used 100%, 100 chance to increase critical damage by 50%. So uh, on, on critical attacks is the kind of specification. It has a cooldown of every, se uh, it has a cooldown time of 10 seconds, but that's, that's fairly monumental in terms of he's just boosting critical damage up on every single skill there. So it's, it's really nice and interesting to see, right? Next up, what we have is he's gonna have a couple of things changes. He's getting almost what looks to be like a complete rework like rogue hero is going to have a increased uh critical damage by 30 percent now and then a increased guaranteed dodge rate by 30 percent so like this is a bonus for him essentially because if you look at increased dodge rate here it was 20 percent now it's 30 percent he's getting that critical damage increase by 30 percent gonna be a lot easier spec it's him and then he's getting an increased skill damage of 35 and 30 so those are bonuses across the board the critical rate is not there but 
okay, you know, that's, that's been moved somewhere else. So if you were to take a look at his keen eye passive, which was previously called precision aim in this uh, on his previous uniform, he's now going to have an applies to self. He's going to get an increased guaranteed critical rate by 35%. So that's nice. That's 15% increase. He's ignoring targets dodge rate by 40%. So already we know that he's going to be a good character against uh, Noel and, you know, other and uh, other world boss legends. 50% chance to penetrate with super armor, barrier, super armor, barrier, shield, all immune damage and so forth. So that's going to be good for him. Then he's got his uh, first skill. Nothing really to write home about on his first skill because it's dealing bleed damage and that's about it so realistically to me this is just a throwaway skill at this point it removes the last city cool but it's just a throwaway skill and then his two skill he's going to have split uh electric shock and that's going to have paralysis on it which ignores immunity which means makes it useful inside world boss and then uh that's about it there but it's cool because it's going to be useful in world boss then his third skill is going to now be pinpoint accuracy this skill becomes a counterattack, so I'm interested to see how that skill is going to look. Uh, so he's going to have counterattacks, and he enables you know attack enemies who have activated ignore targeting. This skill is going to have 20% bleed damage, which is already there. Uh, stun, silence. Uh, he's going to have a heal now on his third skill, so it applies itself. 20% recovery of max HP, a 100% chance for immunity to all damage, and an increase all basic attack by 50%. That's not bad at all. Uh, his fourth skill uh, is now going to be called Assassin's Raid. It's going to deal 20% bleed damage every one second, which removes elasticity. Um, we don't really care about bleed damage. I swear to God, I'm so tired of seeing this. Fun paralysis, and then we have increased basic damage for 80%. So... <clears throat> A little bit moving of things around here right he loses the immunity ch uh, chance for immunity to all damage on this on his fourth skill but and he gets that burn turn to bleed but I we'll have to see how he plays out overall right his fifth skill is gonna be called giant arrow we all saw that in the trailer uh, where he basically shot the huge arrow on the bridge and it basically took the hank pym particle pretty much uh so we got a 20 percent burn damage on there stun decrease all basic defenses so a defense down for 50 percent to stack up to 50 percent and invincibility for five seconds and then uh frenzy buff uh increase all basic attack and defenses 50 all speeds 10 critical rate by 20 and removes incapacitation so hawkeye is also getting a t3 yeah he's also getting a t3 which i think uh you know ultimately everybody's been waiting for this t3 because he's the only avenger left without one so it'll be interesting to see that he gets his t3 his t3 um looks good in my opinion i like i'm not gonna complain about it in any shape form or way um basically he gets a lot on his t3 as well so we kind of return back to a character looking like they're gonna get a lot He's get 40% burn damage, 40% bleed damage, uh, freeze, and then he has paralysis, decrease all basic defenses of 70%, and invincibility for eight seconds. He accumulates true damage dealt at 1%, increase to all basic attacks for every damage dealt. And you can see here, it looks, to me, it looks like a pretty cool skill, um, the way it plays out. You gotta see how it actually plays out though. You know, a lot of, pen and paper kind of stuff there looks really good but we don't know how it's ultimately going to play out so next up let's take a look at hawk hawkeye um kate bishop so hawkeye kate bishop is going to be receiving no matter how you look at it it's going to be it's going to be a uh, complete rework and a complete power upgrade i mean i can't even tell you when this uniform was from um it's been that long ago um it's also a little weird because I don't I think she's supposed to be like of age inside the Witcher Call, but this is a little snazzy for a young Avenger. So let's uh let's let's get into her her skill effects. So we don't really have any uniforms previously to really compare her to. So it is what it is, right? But she's getting an increased chain hit damage by 15% when attacking, a 55% chance to penetrate, increased skill damage by 35, and bonus damage by 40%. Her passives, she's gonna have all new Hawkeye tier two passive, which we saw here. This one had 2030. 20 on it so now her cane her uh all new hawkeye pass is going to have critical damage increase for 35 uh 30 percent 
is going to guarantee dodge rate by 35 percent and guarantee critical rate by 25 so not necessarily the huge swing and buffs that we saw with hawkeye but either way these passives should be good for her character overall her other calm pats calm aim she has here is going to give an ignore targets dodge rate by 35 percent same as it was before but we're going to give a decreased basic damage received by 25 percent so that's a pretty decent one there right uh and then we get into her skills which she as well has pretty much a rework of her entire kit we've got a villain sweep which is going to deal stun damage and then nothing else so you know throw away the one skill as we normally do and then we get her two skill which is going to still deal the 30 percent shock however lose its stun ability yeah i'm surprised about that right why not keep the stun and then we move into her third skill where she's going to basically have uh 30 percent burn damage uh paralysis uh, which ignores immunity so good for world boss legend she's going to get a true damage accumulation on her third skill for 0.8 percent of all basic attacks that's damage dealt so this is going to be good for her ultimately because that's going to be a complete rework to skills um next up on her fourth skill we get uh Applies to enemies so this one's gonna be cool it decreases all basic attacks by 20 decrease all basic basic defense by 20 deals 30 percent bleed damage has a stun effect incapacitation paralysis and then she also gets a frenzy buff for 35 10 and 20 all defense all attacks speed and crit rate respectively and a 100 chance for immunity to all damage there so a lot there on her fourth skill right her fifth skill she's going to have deals uh 30 percent uh is going to be succeeding will 30 percent burn damage stun decrease all basic defense stacks up to 45 percent and then she gets uh self 20 uh applies to self to, uh recovery uh 20 recovery of max hp on her fifth skill and an invincibility effect as well so that's really really good you really can't complain about it before i show you where her t where her uh her uh awakening skill is going to be let's take a look at my uh echo who has her base uniform so there's no uniform effect here but she has her strongest incarnation that she would ever possibly get she is not uh she wasn't in the into the phoenix force you know small acquisition of power of the phoenix force at this point in the, in the uh series she was basically the host of the phoenix force and it was a definitive passing of the torch to her to be the phoenix force host inside this uniform now there's going to be a lot of blowback for this because she wasn't a free character she's listed as an exclusive character inside the game to my to my knowledge um i don't know how players are going to go down on this one especially with the uniform you know so close to being there i would have preferred that they had released the marvel studios hawkeye uniform and then released this uniform or at the very least did a synergy uniform um but that's not what they did here so let's take a look at what she's got i, I really think that we need to complain and make this somewhat of a synergy uniform because it's just so weird to have the comic inaccuracy compared to the, the the cinematic universe be this so like uh let's take a look at her skills though overall and see what we got going here so her leadership is completely changing right so here we had applies to all allies and she was increasing fire damage by 60 percent this was good like i mean especially for any of your fire type characters you weren't complaining about this leadership at all but you're gonna have the argument here about this one being better because she's going to basically apply to speed types and give them an all attack all defense speed uh 60 buff so she got activation rate as well that uh when debuffed all speed types will remove all debuffs so this is a good skill like i don't know but for some reason it makes it seem like you could use this uniform inside uh pvp i like uh, like and put her there as a support lead character and let me explain why because there's going to be some other skills inside here that you're like hmm? so let's talk about her passives right so we've got two new passives we got vengeance begins and we got hero's promise right so you can see hero's promise right here uh and we got basically a change of things here right so this one had increased guaranteed dodge rate by 35 percent on her uh previous uniform still has that effect right we got a 33 percent chance to penetrate with super armor all damage immune and increased skill damage by 25 and an increased bonus damage by 15 so you can see that 
like this skill still basically exists somewhat inside here but on here we basically get a seven what is that eight eight percent increase of that um of that penetrate or whatever is going to be reflected in the increased skill damage by 25 and then 15 so the skill is basically the same same here but here goes the difference right her hero's promise in her new uniform is missing that active recovery of four percent of her recovery of max hp so you're looking at the skills and you're like hmm i could stick around with this passive right but here goes the thing so the difference in passives handprint revenge basically changing this was providing to all allies given that bonus element damage by 15 percent, which already made her a good support character for you know some of your other characters like wolverine and some of your other character whatever fire character you're basically using this was going to increase those like I, you can even throw her in there hell with freaking uh characters like thor and stuff like that because it's an all element damage but now her vengeance begins, right, is going to apply to all speed types. And it's a decreased chain damage by 20% when tax, right? And then it's ignore target's dodge rate by 20% as well. So this is a really good bounce back and forth between how do you really want to use this character and where is she going to ultimately stack up? Now, I think the difference is going to be in how you try to use her. So let's take a look at the skills that she has that basically change. She only gets reworks to three, her three, four and five skills. So everything that was there on the one skill the two skill basically stays the same, right? You basically have incapac incapacitation and paralysis on those skills. Presumably, I don't expect these to be doing fire damage, however, but it doesn't say that there's any changes to these. So we get into three, right? And here goes the truth of the matter, right? On three, she had the, accu she had the accumulation. She still maintains the accumulation, but the biggest difference here is how much of that accumulation exists. Oh, wow. Yo, so let's go down this skill, right? So she basically now has stun. She has a decrease all basic defenses by 10%, uh, which stacks up to a total of 40%. She now gets the self recovery here because she gets the 15% recovery of max HP on this skill. And then she gets an accumulates uh, the 10% true damage dealt. But here goes the difference. And this makes no fucking sense. So as Echo, who's just, you know, the free speed thug, he is going to receive a 1.5% increase of all basic attacks for each 1% uh, damage, accumulated damage. This is damage dealt. Where when she was in her Phoenix form, she was only getting a 0.1%. Yo, that marble, it literally looks like you're just throwing all kind of, you know, logic out the window. So as her Phoenix Force uniform, uh, this uniform, which was a premium uniform, essentially, right? You're telling me that this character was only able to deal 1.1% and you just sold as this uniform, 0.1% increase all basic attacks. But now inside this street level uniform, her weakest of forms that she ever had in the comic books, potentially, she's only getting a uh, she's getting a 1.5 percent all basic attack for her true damage accumulation. Hate to see it, hate to see it, hate to see it. Then we move on to a fourth skill and we've got uh, paralysis on the ability. We have another buff. 15% recovery of max HP here. And then we get a 100% chance for immunity to all damage. So somehow in this street level uniform, she gets a 100% chance for immunity to all damage. While in her Phoenix form, she only gets, she got an 80% chance for immunity to all damage. What makes no sense. Not to mention she gets an increased basic attack damage by 100% for 0 for one attack. Hmm. So next up we get her fifth skill right her fifth skill has stun uh it has inca incapacitation and then it has invincible for five seconds and then she increases all basic attacks by 40 one and then 40. yeah so in her phoenix form phoenix host uniform she was only getting to increase all basic attack and defenses by 10 percent five and five so she gets a jump in this street level uniform to 40 and 40. That's a 30 and 35% jump. It's ridiculous. I really am questioning like 
Look, I get the idea of selling things, but Jesus Christ, Echo is just one of those characters when you look at inside here, you ultimately go, what the fuck? Like, why? Why? I don't get it. I, I really don't. So let's take a look at the uh, the awakening that we have here for Echo and uh, Hawkeye, who apparently have Kate Bishop Hawkeye, who have a team up in here. Basically, their uh, you know potential awakening skills are dead, uh, deadly arrow and acrobatic finish. They basically pair down the same way until they get to about the end. They've got a lot of stats here. So 30% burn damage, 80% chance of missing attack, paralysis, which ignores immunity, uh, decrease all basic defenses uh kate stacks up to 65 while echoes stacks up to 60 then they apply to self a critical rate increase by 35 critical damage increase by 35 ignore targets dodge rate by 70 then they both get an invincible buffs they uh they both remove all debuffs and then they have a 100 chance to increase uh excuse me uh, Kate Bishop has a increased basic damage by 50% for one attack and increase all basic attack by 25% basic defenses by 25% and a physical damage 90% of physical attack while Echo has a 100% chance to increase critical damage by 50% on critical attacks increase all basic attacks by 30% by 30% and basic defenses by 30% and then the physical damage 90% uh, of physical attack so they both pretty much have the same similar awakening skill which is fine and dandy i just still question the the way that that uh uniform was sold to us like everything about net marbles marvel future fight development team has seemed in limbo since about i would say november like it's weird how we've gotten things pushed to us absolutely weird like things have been out of order and eh. It's just really, really weird. And I hope that, you know, some, the changes that are happening over there uh, are related to maybe the Kabam uh, Studios merger with Netmarble's uh, LA office, but we'll see. So <clears throat> I want to pull this up for you guys now so we can talk about these things. Basically, we're getting a couple of other feature changes and stuff. Long awaited feature, the story stage autoplay and auto repeat features are going to be there. So you can basically replay. I don't know why you would necessarily auto repeat the uh or the uh the story mode not really a reason to repeat them there's a reason to auto play them and get them done but i don't know about auto repeat unless it's just going to go through the different stages um but basically we're going to be using um the stages will automatically pay for the designated times using clear tickets and energy uh so it, yeah i don't know and then we have auto progress for each of the features automatically progress so each stage in an agent has cleared once starting from the selected stage and you can just basically go through um this is going to be good because they're also removing some of the patterns inside inside the inside the stages so that way it makes the autoplay feature work because if you've played any of the stages you'll know that there's some of the stages especially inside story boss or you know like ultimate and stuff like that where it's like you've got to dodge like spinning blades and stuff like that i don't know how autoplay is going to necessarily work with those features so it makes sense to get the, to have those removed so yeah but this is a good awaited feature that we've all been looking for they're also adding a new feature and it's called shield archive so the interesting thing about the shield archive from looking at it is it appears to be somewhat similar to the way we have collections on the um inside the epic stories so now it's going to be supplied basically by completing in-game things and you'll basically get rewards so you can see up here like i'm going to collect captain america shield and arc reactor black widows gauntlets and a gamma bomb and when i collect those i'll unlock 100 norn stones 200 you know uh bam and then this looks like shield agent uh uh points whatever to go up right so this is really interesting that we're getting this because i think it adds reason for players to have something that they're grinding towards you know what i mean like i think this is good because you essentially get a lot of players like i had one dude i, I don't know where my man D D dave went i haven't seen him in the channel in a while um but he was playing marvel future fight he dropped out of it and i think he hit a point in the game where he was playing and he just felt like he was it progressing once he got all of the rewards that net marble was throwing at him in the beginning and he didn't know what to do essentially like he was sending me questions about like well you know i haven't even gotten a character to tier three yet i did get a character to tier three because they gave me this but i'm not feeling the progression inside here and i think things like this will enable players to feel like they're progressing through the game 
So you can see here the shield archive data can be acquired at certain uh, chances when clearing content. So like the Captain America shield looks like it's going to be pushed inside Dispatch Mission 3-1. This is great because it'll give us reason to play Dispatch Mission as well. And then you see that here, so some data is going when when acquired is going to be combined. So like if we collect two arc reactors, it looks like we'll be able to co collect like a uh, a Omega uh, Odin's blessing inside here. And now I was looking at it right here and you see like these are different colors from this one. So I'm gonna assume maybe collecting four Black Widow's gauntlet will get enable you to get other rewards. You see Captain's America Shield's blue while these are green and this one's like a different hue of color as well. So interesting to see how that looks after the update. Um, so it's gonna be great to see that. Now, also they point out that instinct stats are gonna be applied from the Shield archive as well. So how this is going to affect characters overall will also be interesting. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to that because it definitely, like I said, I think it's going to give new players something to grind towards or grind in and understand, you know, hey, let's just, just do these things. Go play this other game mode right here. Use your energy to do this and that, and you'll be able to progress a little bit more. Now, we've got new artifacts coming into the game for... Uh, Hawkeye and Kate Bishop and I, I like the way uh, Kate Bishop's look so they didn't put any of the heels and things like that that we were complaining about for characters having inside there but you can see they've got to increase basic damage by 0.2 for every 1% of critical rate regardless of the critical rate and increase the basic damage by total instinct uh, Kate Bishop's though looks a little bit more spicier in my in my opinion 15% chance when attacking applies to self 15% uh, total instinct chance to activate can attack enemies with ignore targeting cannot exceed a 100 chance now it starts really really low here but i'm interested to see how that works out ignore non-boss damage and a non-boss enemy damage decreased by 20 percent so it's interesting to see her uh artifact i like that the skill is pushed in here on an artifact because it definitely makes the artifact something that you go if i got it i'll be happy if i hunt for it i'll be happy uh because it's definitely adding something new to the character that doesn't seem like it's foundationally needed um and then we've got a new future pass inside here with uh some new icons unfortunately i'm not really jazzed about any of these icons it's basically war machine and uh kate bishop hawkeye at the mythic pass level you can see them right here uh I'm not really jazzed about any of these, but if you're a fan of Hawkeye, you're a fan of Kate Bishop, know that the Hawkeye one is probably going to come in the uh, event tokens uh, that we always get. So you'll probably end up having to choose between getting the Hawkeye one or getting like, you know, your dimension chest and so forth like that. They've also added a new uniform collection. So for all three characters sitting inside there, you'll have that uniform collection over there. And then we have the ESO 8 Relay Awakening feature. Thank you god for this you know one of the reasons why my inventory is so full is because of esos i'm not bullshitting like i have so many esos in my inventory like if you go one of the things that i feel like they really need to look at reworking in this game uh 100 is esos and the way they they come in because you can get an all attack eso that's 148 you can get an all attack eso that's 149 and 150 151 you see the slight variations and they're all six star esos but the the difference on them is you know incremental however you know however it may be but look at this this one's 179 meanwhile this one's 148 well these things take up a whole shit ton of space a whole shit ton of space like you can see 60 73 71 78 23 62 30 129 these don't necessarily matter because they stack on top of each other but that's what these need to do I'd like to see a flat stat applied for these overall. Maybe just put them on the high end of whatever the flat stat for that ESO is. So that way they can all just stack because having one that goes 148, 139, what, like Jesus Christ guys, like, and they take up so much room inside your inventory that it just becomes a pain in the goddamn ass to deal with, uh, it really does. So it's something I would love to see them change, but they've added the ability for us to awaken ESOs, right? Uh, realistically, we can awaken ESOs by just doing an auto ESO awaken, similar to the way we do other things, which is a good thing, is a good change, but hey guys, maybe take a look at how we can free up some inventory space by not doing it. 
Now I get that freeing up inventory space means that players have a lot less incentive to purchase your shield pack, your uh, your support uh, pack as well. But this would be nice because I'm so tired of having to clear inventory of ESOs. Um, the custom gear auto change feature is also being added. This one's going to be very interesting because it looks like that we're basically going to be able to set uh, what our stat parameters are for our for our custom gear. So meaning like on the CTP of energy here, you can see that they're, they've got like ignore dodge, critical damage, and then the one random option, right? And basically on those options, you're going to be able to choose like a sliding scale of what it is that you want. So that way you can be like, these are the conditional options that you want. So maybe you want that ignore dodge to be somewhere between 40 and 45%, and you can re-roll these. So that way then you'll get the applicable options. So you can see right here, they play it out where this is the current rate and then you can see the activation rate and the applicable options that you basically wanted this could be cool like i, I could see because it's giving us a chance to uh not necessarily eliminate the rng but play with the rng so that way we can just put it on auto repeat and then hopefully we get what it is that we want within the window that we want um nothing necessarily wrong with that i don't like i don't think it's something that's necessarily players were looking for but nothing wrong with that then we got a new power saving mode i guess this is good i mean i don't usually auto play missions uh auto progress features and auto repeat features like that other than um uh yeah i don't even know what, what i use this for but we basically have this now the interesting thing is that we're gonna have the auto power saving while repeat here goes the one interesting <laughs> interesting thing that they did was they're gonna have themes now for your auto power save right which lets you know something that these will eventually be coming to the store so that you know you'll be able to add themes to your character to your uh auto repeat features inside the game um uh, yeah, you can almost guarantee that these are coming to the game where you're going to have themes for power save. I don't know how much players are going to want that because I don't know how often you're going to see that and if it's going to really matter. Now, what I would love if you just release these themes for use for my mobile platform, that'd be great. If you just had a theme that I could apply to my game, not my game, but maybe I could just apply to my phone in general because it'd be cool to maybe have a Luna Snow as my auto, my, my, my phone's auto power saving mode or whatever all right so then we've got some character usage tips for mockery um being changed and for fortitude things like that are being changed they're adding hero details tabs for card shield archive and agent so you know where bonuses are coming from respective to those and that's about it there's going to have some network fixes but we're going to have a lot of downtime maintenance so definitely look at it you can even see inside some people think that you know like hey how did these characters get better improvements than Infinity Ultron, especially when he was a world boss legend in your game? And it definitely is one of those eye popping things. I think Echo was prime example of that. Like it's one of those things where it's like, hey, yeah, dev team, get that you're trying to make money, right? But um, there ain't no way Echo from the Marvel comics, from the Marvel Cinematic Universe should be stronger than the Echo that's inside the comics universe where she's host not not like a bit somewhat empowered she's host to the phoenix force just doesn't make sense guys like we really need to think about these things before we do them it doesn't seem like there's enough forward planning there happening so that's everything that's coming to the game um tonight uh be prepared for the maintenance because you're gonna be down for quite some time until next time guys peace